Today's video will be about North Korean's cyber war and their hackers. But as always, before I do that, I would like to thank my subscribers. Let's start with a bit of infrastructure. In North Korea, we have Kim Jong-un on top and under it is the military. And one of the bureaus is the Reconnaissance General Bureau. They work with foreign intelligence. They work with inter-Korea relations. But they also have a bureau one to one. And under there, we have some units that are interesting for us. And I will show in detail what they are doing. Office 98 uh, works with collecting information on defectors. I'll come back to that. 414 works with espionage, just normal South Korea. What are they doing? How are they making money? How is their economy? America. Anything that you can uh, learn about your enemies is done by that office. Office 35 works with the development of malware and office or unit 180 works with stealing money. Um, for example, the bank heist in Bangladesh. And unit 91 is the one that works with cyber attacks and I will also elaborate a little bit on that. First, office 98. They are quite big and they spend a lot of time monitoring uh, daily North Korea, but also defectors. What they basically do is try to infiltrate the computers of people that are defectors, try to map the network, who knows who, try to infiltrate the telephones, who talks to who. And if any information is coming from North Korea, maybe some news about people that have been arrested for watching South Korean videos, then they will try to verify where does this information come from? Who gave this information? Can we find these people? Can we stop these kind of information flows? Now let's have a look at Hacker Unit 91. Here we have a picture of Park Yin Yuk and I'll elaborate a little bit about this person. If you really want to know a lot more about it, I will leave a link in the description of the video. Uh, where you can read a 178-page report about it. But in North Korea, they have about 2,000 to 7,000 cyber warriors. They have approximately 100 new ones each year, and they also train outside North Korea. So here we have this person that, according to North Korea, does not exist, but he made these email address addresses. And he also used these email addresses uh, for official North Korean business, which of course is not very smart. Now, he used this email to make this one. And this one he used to make really a lot of others, which we can see here, and also Facebook accounts and other accounts. And he then used these in the attack against the Bangladesh Bank, the Sony Pictures. Here we can see that all the blue lines are actually um, accounts accessed directly from North Korean IP addresses or uh, via a proxy server, but still directly from North Korea. The gray lines are interconnections. That means that this account might have been made by this account. So we know there's a blue line directly from North Korea to this account, but then he used this account to make this account. And then a little bit about the infrastructure of the attack. We have uh, the Sony picture attack here, which was done from these accounts. And we have the Bangladesh heist, which were done from these accounts. And as you can see, they are interconnected. And this account is connected with this one, with this one, this one, this one, and these here. And here we can see the different tools they used. These are hacking tools. I could elaborate on it, but it's just going to be an extremely long story. But the same tools are used for different attacks, which is kind of leaving your, your fingerprints or your signature. And here we have the WannaCry. I will talk a little bit about that one. Um, WannaCry is a malware piece of software that will infect a computer and then it locks it. It basically means that unless you pay, you cannot access your files. Now, when this was uh, spread, I did lock up uh, 300,000 computers. 
and quite a lot of them were from the NHS in Britain and it cost the NHS six million pounds. The money they made, the money that people paid, was actually only 380,000 US dollars because the attack failed. But it still had severe consequences because many hospitals had to cancel appointments, had to cancel operations. People couldn't get their subscription uh, medicine. And of course, among these 300,000 normal people, many people lost their data because they couldn't afford to pay a few hundred dollars to get access to their computer. It's a little bit like this. You have your bicycle, you lock it, and then when you want to pick it up, there is another lock on it. It's still your bicycle, you just can't use it. There is another electronic warfare bureau. They are on this, by the blue line. And they work with normal warfare, but then electronic. That means that in case with a war with South Korea or the US or NATO, uh, they would disrupt all the traffic lines. They would disrupt the nuclear power plants. They would open or close dams. They would disrupt the chemical industry. They would make sure that the hospitals in South Korea could not work because the electricity might not work or the computer systems will be blocked. And then, of course, they work very hard on making sure that communication between people that potentially will attack them cannot work. Now, since this person doesn't exist, he doesn't live here. There are rumors that uh, the people that work for the cyber army live in these very luxurious apartments. It's usually only people from the cyber department and very famous people that live here. But according to North Korea, this person doesn't exist, so therefore he doesn't live here. But we do know that she lives there, so you have to be um, very much appreciated by North Korea to be able to live in this building. And if you want to have a look, you can see the code and it's here. Now, why does North Korea use hackers? Well, it's really cheap. One hacker can do a lot more damage than a tank. And um, they are quite good at stealing money. So it brings money in for nuclear development or luxury goods. There is very little risk for counterattacks because North Korea doesn't really have a, a cyber infrastructure. And you can work international. Now, here we have, let's see, here we have Vladivostok and we, we have two fiber optic cables going to North Korea. And of course, in case of a war, um, this would be cut as soon as possible. But it doesn't really make much difference because North Korea also works from India, Belarus, Russia, uh, until lately from Malaysia. And possibly they have people stationed in Europe that could do cyber attacks, even though the country itself might not have access to Internet anymore. They'll still be able to attack. Well, well, thanks for watching and please subscribe. Like I said, I will leave two links in the description. Uh, one is from the Justice Department. It's about the Park complaint. It's 178 uh, pages. So it's quite an interesting report to read, but it's very long. And then there's one uh, scientific paper, the All Purpose SWORD, uh, which is a peer reviewed paper about cybersecurity and cyber warfare from North Korea. And it's definitely worth to have a look at it.